Tuesday. I'm so excited to be here with you. I have Sheila June Azim with me to talk to you just about how she made it happen that in the middle of this pandemic, right before I think the holidays, she got a manager and two agents working with her. And she's going to fix me up if I if I got that incorrect. But Sheila, can you turn on your camera and join us over here? I think you should be able to. Yay! Yeah. And I can I just say before we even begin that I have been so excited to have this conversation with you. And I just want to compliment Sheila June and you'll get into this. Actually, let's get into it first and then I'll compliment you. Is that okay? No, I'm complimenting you first. I can't help myself. <laughs> Sheila June came into this process as such a trained actress. I'm gonna say it start there, talented actress. And like I would imagine, and you can put this in your own words, like you've done a few things in your life. Like you've looked for agents in the past. You've had situations where it's worked and hasn't worked in the past. Can you tell a little bit us a little bit about what life was like before you started this process? Sure. Um, before I started this process, Brian, I was so tired. Um, and I think many actors might understand that feeling. Um, you know, it's it's almost embarrassing to admit how hard I had been trying before um, signing up for this process, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I had a manager, you know, for six years at one point, but I didn't get out very much with him, even though, you know, I liked him. But the truth is, I, I was actively seeking an agent for um, about 15 years. I'm exhausted when you say that. <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm cry right away. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, and I, what, what you're saying though is so common, right? Like you're like, I'm just always on the grind of looking yeah. because whatever I've got right now isn't working. And I'm sure like the manager was like a little helpful at times for you. Like you said, you're with them for six years. So I'm sure that something was going on from time to time. But that like, I would think it's like you get scraps from the table yeah. and that that is not the way that I think your relationship yeah, with your- Yeah, totally going into like living in starvation mode and like always getting little crumbs here and there that kept me going. So- the, I kept working because of relationships that I had built with people, with directors, with writers. So I was always doing things, but I was never getting into the rooms that I needed to be getting into. And it was just so frustrating because I really wanted to give up. And, and honestly, Brian, like the pandemic was like, what a great, what a great time to give up acting finally. <laughs> You know, no one's gonna- I'm laughing, but I'm also hurtful, hurting right? when you say no, that, but it was like, true. is this a sign? Yes. Right. What a great time to give up acting. I can finally- throw in the towel, you know? And for the first six months, all I did was, or maybe five months, all I did was teach yoga. And I was like, I'm just going to teach yoga all the time. And, you know, no ego and blah, blah, blah. And then I was always getting like readings. I was people, people kept on casting me in projects, probably like once a month throughout the pandemic. And then I got an invitation to your masterclass. And what I do want everyone to know is I was somebody who on your, do you remember this story? I was on your free masterclass. I think you asked a hard, I think you asked a tough question during a Q and A once or something. Tell me what are you going to say. You tell no. me. I started out as like the most cynical, like whatever, this is not going to work. I've done everything. Yeah, right. I Tell me what the, so wait, so wait, take us there because I have to say, I, those are my favorite people. So if you're listening right now and you're that person, I, I would be the, screw this Brian guy. Like, I don't need that. I should be able to do this on my own. Like screw that. Like I am that person. Tell me how was how did you go through the how did that start for you like how did how did that start to break down and how, yeah. tell me a little bit about that yeah 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 I mean that's really it was like the, the beginning process was was the most impactful because I literally hung up off the zoom rudely I left I left and I was so into everything he was saying and then at some point I was like bullshit bye bye <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you should go back and figure out what it was I said, but okay, that's great. <laughs> um, it. And then I woke up the next day uh, and I had this like really sick feeling that it, it I realized that I didn't believe it was going to work for me because I had like, I had just stopped believing in myself, you know? Mm -hmm. I'd given up. I was like, I've officially given up. And then the actor part of me that's disciplined said, well, screw that. If I've given up, then who cares? I'll just try it. Why not? Got it. I love that. And what I love about also what you said is you like identify this part of you, because I think that sometimes that's, we can grab onto like, it's all of me that says give up. It's all of me that doesn't believe this. And I love and hate the part where you said, I woke up the next morning. I didn't feel like you had, I felt sick to my stomach. Like yeah. I had something was wrong in that you followed that emotion, which was trying to tell you something, right? You didn't just be like, I'm, I'm sick to my stomach. I'm going to just go on with my day. You were like, what is this telling me? And I think that's such a, um, 
not what you think about when someone's like, so this is how you're going to get an agent. You're going to send it, right? It's like, like you're actually using the guidance that you're God given, spirit given, universe given through this process. And that's where, you know, where I like to make my home with people, right? Spend that time, right? Yeah. So, okay. So you were totally cynical, started into the course. Exhausted. So first- Also exhausted. Also exhausted, right? Exhausted and cynical. <laughs> Can't believe you made it out the other side, right? Okay. So, so tell us a little bit of your story of how- you landed your manager. Tell us that story. And, and like everybody, tell, what, tell us all exactly what you booked and what you landed. Tell us, tell us that story real quick. You have a manager and two agents or how did it work out? I, I signed with a, right away, I signed with a um, amazing Southeast agent that I love. And I'm just, I'm getting so many auditions. I got a co-star audition right before coming on this. I have like, I have an audition to, for a feature right after we finish. Um, oh my gosh. He's the best. And I awesome. signed with yeah. And I signed with a manager. It's a long, I had a very long drawn out story. Um, right. I signed with a manager who originally was not my top choice. And I'm so glad I followed your advice, which was say, go in, go in, say, and say yes, go in with a mindset of yes mm -hmm. to everybody and then decide. Because what happened was the more research I did, I followed your advice, which was ask some friends about this manager. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did. And which I can go 50, 50 on, which FYI, Sheila June, I can go 50, 50 on that because I always feel like, um, your friend's experience won't necessarily be your experience. But in that moment, I was really feeling like for you, you needed to make this person more of a person or like hear more of their track record. And That's so right. it was lucky that you actually had people that you knew. Did you do, you did have friends that actually knew them, right? I did. Okay. I did. Right. Yeah. And I reached out to them and they both had the same thing to say, which was that they were auditioning all the time and very happy. So so it really changed my mindset and opened my mind a little bit um, to her, especially when my first, I, I had a very drawn out process where I was so in love with the first uh, manager that I met and they had, the, they were drawing it out for weeks and weeks where other people were just saying yes. And the ones that I wanted were like, we'll let you know in three weeks. <laughs> and then in three right, weeks. So wait, right, wait, wait, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. We're saying three weeks. They said, okay, so now you get to meet with the other person in one week. And then I met with the other person in one week. Meanwhile, I still have people waiting. And right. then they said, and now we'll let you know in another week. So it was like right. this five, six week waiting process. And they eventually yeah. actually passed on me and which was fine, but I was Was it? It was yeah. because the second guy and I didn't, we didn't, oh. I didn't, we didn't click. I'm making a hand gesture. We didn't. Yeah. He, he brought out the feelings that I had had before, which was like, you walk into a room as an actor, they immediately dismiss you. They're not really paying attention. They're, yeah. they're kind of ADD, you know, like not totally present with you. Yeah. So, so it wouldn't have been a good match probably for you anyway. Yeah. In that way. Right. So what I love about you saying that, so two things I want people to hear, which is that process of holding space for six weeks of a decision is anxious. Like, let's just be real. It's because like, you're a servant of two mindsets. And the one mindset is, I think, you tell me if this is way, way, way for you, Sheila, you know, this is what I observed in you, is I want to have integrity and be kind and clear with the people who've offered me something and let them, and I also don't want to lose them, That's right? right? Yeah. And I'm the other mindset is I also, maybe these potentially better people might say yes to me. And so it's a little like, I'm kind of, it's almost feel like you're lying because you're like, I can't give you a yes yet because I don't even know if I have a yes here. Right. And it leaves you feeling I don't naked. I think very uh, like, Oh, exposed. I was tortured. I was tortured during the process and it was ironic. And I actually really believe in the like divine timing of this and go and accepting the obstacles that come to us because anybody who knows me from our class knows like I, I'm such a like to work under pressure. I was ready to go very early. Mm -hmm. So being forced to wait that yeah. long and hold space was definitely really challenging for me. I, it was really like an emotional roller coaster. But what happened in that process was other people were trickling in. Yeah. So the agent that I ended up freelancing with trickled in during that time. So I oh, during this, during the waiting, like you thought like, okay, we're done. I've heard from everybody, but then more people coming later, people which this is something I hear a lot. And I just want to make sure people are, I'm going to pause you here to make sure that people are getting this is I wish everyone was a robot and they would just respond to you immediately, <laughs> but that's not how people are. And so the answers can come from you two, three, four weeks later. Hey, I've had a chance to look at your materials. Would love to meet with you. So for you, did it change any of who you ended up working with or did you just have more meetings as it as they dragged as it came later 
Um, it changed who I ended up working with in that they eventually passed. And thank goodness I held space with the right. manager that I signed with and was able to touch base with her and just let her know the truth, which is like, yeah. I will honor these meetings. I'm yeah. still interested in working with you. Um, but yeah, people did keep trickling in for weeks and weeks and weeks. That's crazy. I love it. I love I it. I want to so, say yeah. all the people that I ended up working with um, the three people I ended up working with were all people who, before giving me meetings, asked for more information. So they said, can you please send me your actor's access link? Can you please download these or upload these monologues? Like nobody was an immediate meeting. They right. all I ended up working with wanted to know more about me first. Well, and I also want to make sure everyone hears that because it doesn't mean that Sheila June did something wrong. It actually is she did exactly where you want to get because it wasn't like Sheila June should have said, here's 65 things for you to look at so you can make your final decision. You actually need that communicate. I believe you need that communication to start so that it can become like, oh, this is a person. Okay, yes. And part of what it gives them is you behaving as a client. So like, how quick is she to get back to me? How, how does she write her email? So it's part of the journey of you. And also like, how did they ask for it? And were they clear? And is clarity even important to you? Are you a little bit more messy and you're okay with it? Like this is all. So what I wanted to point to also is that going back to that six weeks, you know, such a big part of, you know, we, we can be very transparent that this was through agent goals that you got this manager yeah. and agent and agent, but that self-care being such a huge part of what this process was like. Can you speak to that a little bit for anybody listening? Well, sure. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already one of these people that will probably annoy you because I, you know, do yoga and meditate every day. And, you know, yeah, you're I'm annoying like, me. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. Well, <laughs> well, like one thing I want to be more open about, about myself as an artist and as a human being is that like, I have a very real history of bipolar and mental illness. So like taking care of myself is absolutely essential to just functioning, but it also like can be great for you know, minor little manias when you get a lot done really quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, we're going to take our strengths when they show up. Okay. I want to be more honest about this because I mean, a lot of artists do have like, you know, mental health challenges. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of taking care of myself, it was really challenging. It was really, really challenging. I mean, I stuck to my ritual, which is, you know, get your good sleep, take your vitamins, but like, it's also hard not to drink too much during the holidays, if you, know, <laughs> right, sure. you know? So it was, it was tough, you know, honestly, like I got, when, when, when things started leading up to January and it, like weeks and weeks had passed and I was getting nervous because I was worried, um, you know, I, I called on a therapist. I, I talked to friends, right. I, you know, yeah. I don't know how successful I was with the mental health aspect of this, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but what I, so here, I want to be really mindful of what you're saying, because I want people to have a context for this. Cause what Sheila June is saying is, and you, correct me if I get any of this wrong, okay, mm -hmm. is I have to put myself out there, A, because I'm reaching out to managers and agents. That's just given. That's a piece of it. And then I had to then extend that through the six weeks process, which happened to be over the, like everyone's not going to be reaching out over the holidays and New Year's, which was a bold choice. I think that was a really bold and sexy and courageous choice. You know, one of the things that I think, so just kind of putting this into like a, a container is what we don't want is Sheila June to go to meetings and be depleted. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your meetings and what, like, where, what, what did you notice about yourself in your meetings? Like that surprised you maybe even. Oh, I love that question because um, I had, I had two meetings that I felt didn't go well, quote unquote, I'm using quotation marks yes. right here. And I had meetings that went fantastically and they were all in the same time. And the reason one went well and one went, didn't go well, it was because of chemistry. So I did the same preparation for everybody. I did the same preparation for myself, you know, which, which I would do, I would do breathing exercises first. I would do the, a little prayer for them. I would do right. mantra, right. you know, and, and just so if you're listening, guys, this is all part of, this is not Sheila sitting over there and blowing on candles and sucking on crystals. This is actually, <laughs> which also is a great thing to do, right? This is also like part of inside of the program is like creating this mantra and what is the way that you're going to send them a message beforehand. So you did your homework. And then, so what I'm hearing you say is I was clear enough to know it wasn't about me having a bad meeting. It was right. about, that wasn't my match. That's right. That's right. And I had one, yeah, I had one meeting, Brian, where um, she called me 
20 minutes. We it was a phone meeting and she called 20 minutes early. Uh, no, and- I can't. Don't. That's horrible. That's like disaster. That what a devil. I, <laughs> I never got to do a prayer or a mantra for her and it did not work out. <laughs> <laughs> I look like so she she missed out is what I hear you saying when you say that. But wait, so um, how many meetings did you end up going to? Um, I ended up meeting with eight different managers and agents, but nine meetings total. Okay, and can you tell me a little bit about um, in the meeting? I know you said you really were prepared. What like surprised you about any meetings? Because I feel like like even the, the I feel like what we can find is that the season for what managers and agents and asking can change during the year. It's not always the same questions, but typically it's a good. Uh, you know, I have my top twenty questions. I think they all ask, but they don't all ask twenty questions. Like, what was something that you took away from, like the collective? I guess. Sure. Well, I I knew that they were all going to want to know about my background as an Iranian person who speaks Farsi, because that's kind of, you know, a little bit of an edge. Yeah, Uh, that didn't surprise me. But I will say something that did surprise me was how many of them um, really wanted to know about who else I was meeting with. And a lot of them were very, very curious about what other people were doing and what their technique was. So like, at first, I wasn't sure how to handle it. And I was just yeah. kind of evading the question. Yeah. And then I was like, sure, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. <laughs> yeah. So they asked, like, who else are you meeting with? And then, like, what do you mean by techniques? Were they asking things? Like, would give you really, can you be really explicit? Yeah, like, did she ask you for a phone meeting? Did she send you this? Did she do uh-huh. that? Are they still doing this? Yeah. Um, it, so that was su- surprising to me how curious they were about the others. And that happened in both regions because I was looking at the Southeast region and right. the New York region. So wait, I want to ask you about that in a second. But before we go there, I think one of the things that I'm taking away from what you just said is managers and agents, they're winging it the same way that actors are. Like, what are other people doing? How are they getting to know if you're any, like, remember that if I'm sitting across from you right now, I'm thinking about, am I being a good interviewer for Sheila June? And you're thinking, am I being a good interviewee for Brian? Like that's what the thoughts that go in our head. Like, am I answering the questions well, right? At some point we kind of bump into that with ourselves. The same thing's going on for the manager agent. Am I asking the right questions? Like, right. And so I'm sure that that's part of their own, like, how else are other people doing it? Especially in a year, an unprecedented year, right? We're like, what's right. Okay. So you looked in two different regions can you, did you, do, you didn't do them at the same time? You did them at different times, right? I did do them at the same time. Whoa, wow, whoa. We need to like erect a statue to you because in my mind, I always feel like doing two at the same time is a, a it's a, just a lot of space to take up. Can you tell us a little bit about, were you taking meetings in New York and in the Southeast? I mean, obviously on Zoom or phone or whatever at the same time, basically in the same time frame. I was, I was taking them at the same time frame. And actually originally I was going to do three regions and somebody kind of wise named you suggested I don't do that. So I'm so glad that I did the two because it was certainly overwhelming for sure. But I definitely made sure that part of what I go for it. Sorry. Your, your, your sound got delayed for one second. So I couldn't hear you. So go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, one of the things I did do that I'm really glad I did was I cleared the week and I cleared the week after sending them out. And I am so glad I did because it was, you know, yeah, it was like, how quickly can you respond? How quickly can you get, you get me your actor's access profile, your YouTube link, your monologues uploaded, you know? So right. I'm very happy that I gave myself that time to be present as much as I could with all of the responses. I got a lot. I had about 20 tell me mores. 20 people said, tell me more. I want yeah, more I had about 20 people, people tell me, say, tell me more. And then I had three immediate meetings without telling me more. And then, you know, a good half of those didn't, weren't interested anymore, which is fine. Right. right? Um, so there was a important that you're saying is like, just imagine, I want everyone to imagine from themselves, 20 people saying, tell me more. And they're not all asking for the exact same thing. No. Right. And like, and you're wanting to treat each one of them as a human being so that they can see who you would be as a client and all this busyness you're talking about after sending an email, most actors who may be listening right now don't have that experience. The experience is cricket, cricket, nothing. Right. Or like one meeting with a lane manager or something. So what I, I love about this process is that you did have that, like, I am wanted experience. Were you able to take that in 
or were you not? No. No, I'm still, I feel like maybe I'll process it today after talking to you, but I'm still having some shock, you know? I mean, in the moment I was like, let's do it. I was like, you know, like, great, let's, let's get this job done. But then I think because it became so drawn out, it was so quick at first. And then it yeah. became so drawn out all those old shadow selves or whatever you want to call it. All those like, you know, demons that talk to you and say, you're not good enough. And what are you doing? And, you know, kind of started creeping back in and, Oh, what if I lose the, I lose the spark that, you know, I got in this group process. Right. You know, right. one thing I really want to share with everybody who hasn't done agent goals is like, I think one of the things that really, 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 really helped me in this process was being a part of a group mm -hmm. and getting feedback. So, you know, we sent out, self tapes to these agents and managers. And, you know, Brian told us, yes, you have to get them coached and like getting, finally hiring a coach changed my life. Yeah. And, and you, I remember you had a, you have some baggage about that at first. Yeah. I had some <laughs> baggage. Yeah. I, Cause I, you know, I was one of these actors that was like, I guess, I guess I felt same, you know, like pride and pride and insecurity go hand in hand. Right. Yes. Yes. I should know how to do this. And I'm, and I think the way that I process what you just said to me is, you know, I, if I'm going to reveal a little about me, I wish I had sought out a coach to help me with my business about 10 years ago. At the time I was also acting. Cause I was like, I still love acting. And then I was like, no, I hate acting. Love actors. Acting wasn't for me. Right. But I pride in like, I think just like instilled from my father, like you should be able to figure it out on your own. Like, it's just like you figure it out on your own and that's the way you be. And that's very like a annoying uh, capitalistic meritocracy, masculine kind of way of looking at the world. Right. And so I was afraid to asking for help. Right. Asking because when you ask for help, that reveals you're like, where we think, or we can add a story, but this reveals insecurity or it reveals a weakness or something. Right. And so I, I love that you're pointing to the community. Yes. Felt like you well, both. I think it was absolutely quintessential and, and the, what really made the difference between what, what, what I was doing before and what I was doing now with people getting feedback. And I knew my self tapes weren't great. I just didn't know why, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. and you were really good at, po I'll say, I'll just, I want to just, I, I will say this, you know, no one signs up for to get an agent course or program because of the community. They never said, that's why I'm gonna sign up. Rarely does someone think that through. And to a person, every person says, the group is what made the difference for me. The group is what made the difference for me. And I just think that is the, the everyone's willingness to, to share as soft as you share or as loud as you share, right? There are people who share very softly with like, hey, I'm feeling a little down today. I need a little bit of help. And those people are like, here's my self tape. And like, right? And I think that no matter how you share, you're finding this great, swell of support. But what I love that you did, and you just said it now is I was willing to be seen and get feedback on my actual acting, which is the place I think most actors are afraid to point in a manager agent hunt. They're like, I'm just not doing the manager agent hunt part right. Well, actually, unless your acting is like wowing me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I don't have the time to call you in. Like, so that was such a, you were really willing to be seen is what I know. It's like, hey, look at my material, look at my material. What do you think? Does that, was that what your experience was like? Well, yeah, but that was after, that was after I went through my resistance process because sure. if I can go back in time for a minute, you know, yeah. I started, how did I go from cynical, resistant, hanging up the phone to signing up to being so willing to, to trust you? Like that didn't just happen. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, right. like I, I didn't trust, I didn't trust people. I just felt so burnt out being in New York. Didn't feel like anybody really cared. Nobody really has time, you know? Um, so, you know, your first assignment in agent goals, and I hope I can make this clear for people listening, yeah, sure. you know, was to do this thing where we tell the story of ourselves and, 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 and investigate, you know, what are areas that are still hurting. Right. So long story short, the day I did the story, <laughs> after the first week and I didn't want to do it. I was like, Hey friends, that. I was like, Hey friends, I have this really dumb assignment that I have to do. <laughs> do you still feel that way? Do you still feel like it was a dumb assignment? <laughs> no, it was the story that changed everything. This first uh, module is what, what changed everything pretty early on for me. So um, the day I told the story, I, there was a, there was a particular thing that had happened where I had been replaced in one of my favorite plays I had ever done. And it had broken my heart. I thought if, if the best work I had ever done, I'd been replaced in, well, I definitely am not good enough. Um, well, that day, the day I told the <laughs> story, talk about divinity or whatever you want to call it, universe. The day I told the story, 
I got an invitation to audition for a paid, the paid, like a professional production of the same play with a new director that I thought that I was blackballed on. And then I went on to go to callbacks and I went on to book it. And this thing that had broken my heart for years, the day I told my story came back into my life and healed. And so from that moment on, Brian, I was like, I trust Brian. I'm just going to trust you. That does sound pretty divine though. That's incredible. Not everyone has that kind of a beautiful, clear sign in that way. But what I love that you just said is you owned that this stayed with you, this burn, this past burn had really had stayed with you and it needed to be healed before, or it needed to be owned for you to show up. And that's where I think a lot of um, actors can go wrong. And they, that's also they can be where they start to hurt, like self-flagellate themselves is like, I need to, like you said, I was looking for an agent for six years. Is that what you said? 15 years? 15 is that, years. Yes, 15 years, right. I was like, right. And, and the truth is you're probably just as talented as you ever were. And now you're willing to be seen in a different way. You're seeing the fullness of who you are. So, okay. So if you were going to say there was one specific part of agent goals, you might've touched on already that helped you the most, what would it be? Was it, and why? Oh, it's so hard. Um, but I think the whole, I mean, the whole, not to evade the question, but the whole process, there was a reason it was a, a long process. So there mm -hmm. were steps and the theme was taking things bird by bird, mm -hmm. step by step. What, I mean, I think trusting, trusting the process and, and, oh, I know what it is. It was uh, the pledge. There's a pledge at the beginning of each course that says something to the degree, something like, um, I'm a whole and complete artist who takes action without drama or delay. And that was my go-to. So whenever I had resistance come up, I would think I am a whole and complete artist who takes action without drama or delay. You're not, Get the, out of the, pledge. You're not the first person who mentioned the pledge. And I feel like for me, it is such a, it's like when you prelude to the flag or something like it's <laughs> kind of like that, right? Um, that has other weird meanings now. So we're going to let that be what it is. But I think that, um, what you say about it, in it, it, I'll just say as a creator, as a creator of the program, it surprises me how much the pledge affects people. And at the same time, it reminds me how when I'm having a moment like desperation or anxiety, I grab onto, for lack of a better word, a bumper sticker thought to keep me from going into the abyss. And so yeah. I just hear what you're saying is that the pledge like kept you out of I love that. I take an action, yeah. take action with drama or delay, right? Because in the moment you're like, I can totally decide to be dramatic about this. I can re I can go there if I want to. Yeah. Right? You can yeah. get all sorts of weird. Something yeah. you always said to us was don't get weird, don't get weird, don't get weird, you know? Right. And we do, we get actors get weird about things because it's sensitive. We're, you know, we are, our, our art form is so vulnerable. It is, it's about who we are and our interpretation of the world. And of course we're going to get weird. Yes, of course you're going to get weird. And then we just have to like, okay, I'm being weird. At least acknowledge I'm being weird. Because let's be really mindful. Like you're sending out emails and you're doing a self-tape and like you're putting yourself out there. And there's like some technical stuff to that, which is so not your job. Your job is to be a fabulous storyteller, right? And so it's going to be uh, what I always think is when you're not doing, the further something is from your function. And so I believe your function is to act. So the further it is from your function, the less aligned it's going to feel or the e less easy it's going to be. Yeah. And so the f like doing good computer things is not necessarily aligned for an actor, right? Oh. And so we need to be really mindful of our mindset that we go through that. So I just appreciate that you're acknowledging that like, hey, I needed some tools to help me in those moments specifically. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I mean, doing a self-tape setup is not in my alignment at all. And I no. have resistance to it. So working with the coach that I finally got, because you said, I, I even asked Brian, I said, you know, can I, can I ask a friend, who, friends who direct? And he's like, nope, nope. nope. Because I a coach. <laughs> right. Can I just tell you why I believe in that so much? Let me just share. So, and you, you heard this before, but I want everyone, the reason why I believe in a coach helping you for your auditions is that's what they do all day long. So they've seen other people, they've seen the traps, they've seen what looks good, they see what doesn't look good. It's just like when you choose a headshot photographer, the reason you choose a headshot photographer instead of like a portrait photographer is because they do that. Someone who does something all the time is better at it, right? And so I'm wanting to have an expert help you, especially with the self-tapes that you're kind of hinging this process on in this kind of world. Yeah, yeah. right. It doesn't and mean you need to coach for every single audition you have for the rest of your life. Yeah. You be careful, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I'm so glad I did that because I actually, this coach has also, that was the other thing is like, this coach has changed my whole process and I love him. And we're, we're working together after we get off this today to okay. self tape. And yeah, I wanted to tell you, like, I've had so many, I've had more auditions in the last six weeks than I've had in like 2020, 
compl- like combined. I've had double. I've had double the auditions. That uh, Sheila June, that makes me so happy. You know, I wanted to share. I'm just gonna say some nice things to Sheila June for a second here, if I yeah. can. Is um, it's so easy to be happy for Sheila June? That's what my experience has been because you are getting dirty. You will get in there, you will play in the mud and you will say, this is me, I'm stuck here, screw you. No, like, but without judgment, like I feel like it is a, there is a level of play inside of your own experience that allows you to say, I'm being, yeah, screw this, I'm logging off right now, but without a um, demonizing or making someone wrong. And that is the kind of citizen of the world that I hope comes through this process. Like that that's the person that is gonna be able to do, have the process that you just described. And so I just think your success is so well-deserved for being willing to say, I'm resistant. I'll log on to the next one. I'm logging off of this one to like to just name that inside of yourself is such a tool that I think will continue to support you through your career no matter what. So I just want you to know it's been really joyful to watch you bump your head up against the wall and then get excited about it. like it is just a very, very um, joyful experience to watch you be willing, your willingness. And that's one of the things, you know, the pledge, the first line of every pledge is I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. And I have, I've probably said this before, but I have such a aversion to the word I am ready because I think readiness brings demons with it. Like ready looks like everything is bright and shiny and ready looks like this. And I just, if you can bring your willingness and I think readiness kind of shows up. So I just really appreciate your willingness for this whole process. It's been exciting. Yeah. For sure. I can't I mean, wait. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I seriously feel like I, I've been in New York for a long time. I don't, I don't easily just buy into things, but <laughs> like, you have really helped me trust people and trust community and trust myself. And I'm just like so grateful to know you and that like I can get dirty and that's okay. I can play in the mud and also have the integrity and like you recognize that. And like just the way you communicate with us as a group is amazing. I, I don't even understand like your patience. Oh, I don't know if we have enough time, but like, I also want to share that like in the very beginning of the process, before I had my breakthrough, when I decided to trust Brian, I was such yeah. a, I was such a cranky age uh, actor that I like emailed Brian and Summer, his assistant. And I was like, Hey, I have a problem with how you're <laughs> I remember this email. It wasn't a bad email. I didn't think, you may have felt really cranky for you. It didn't feel that cranky for me. Tell tell everybody though. I think it's great. <laughs> After the first um, oh, call or whatever, oh, whatever yeah. class, the first class, yeah. I got so irritated with how some of the things were being managed or whatever, or just like, I, I don't want, I got irritated with other people's questions and then yeah. not paying attention to the module. Other people is really what it was. It really That's- was other people. It's so funny. You're like, and the community was everything. And in the I beginning, know. I, you know, oh. and I, I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's how I started out. I started out like, cause, because before you go on to the, um, before you go to the class, you send us a module to study and listen to. And you, you just, you say you, you're very clear about everything. And so like, you know, a half hour was being spent re-explaining these things. And I got super irritated and just like impatient, like, let's get to it, you know? Um, so I actually yeah. reached out and was like, I don't appreciate, blah, 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 blah. maybe I wasn't that me, <laughs> but that's, I, that's where I started from. And then I ended up like, I love the community. I trust everybody. And, you know, I've yes. developed friendships with people and yeah, I'm definitely on the other side of that and I'm grateful to, I'm grateful that I did listen to that little part of myself that woke me up saying something's off with this, you know? Yeah. And I also think what you're saying is very normal. Like I want to move at my pace and someone else isn't there. And like, so what, what I loved at the end of it, like, and I loved everyone at the end of the day. So it was great. So um, to kind of, we're getting close to time. I want to, I don't want to take in much more of your time, but what do you think you learned about yourself in this process? You kind of covered it today, but I want to give you a chance to answer that question directly. I think what I learned about myself is that I was a lot more vulnerable and scared than I let myself realize. And I think that there's, it seems, sounds like a cliche, but I think when we are able to recognize that we're vulnerable, that we're scared, that there's things to work on, then we can go from there, right? And like approach ourselves with a little bit more compassion and love and reach out. But I think beforehand I had felt like, well, I know, I know this, I have to do it on my own. I have to figure it out on my own. I should know all how to do all this by now. How long have I been doing it? going from the hardened place of I'm tough, 
screw you, something's wrong with me. I'm probably just not good enough to, I'm scared I'm not good enough. Let me explore that and see if that if that's true. And then, oh, hey, maybe that's not true. And to have signed with two agents and a manager after telling them more, and it's based on my talent, is something that's been kind of hard for me to allow myself to process still. So I think- yeah. I- Letting myself, letting myself say, okay, yeah, this is really scary and I'm scared and I'm vulnerable and that's okay. And hopefully that'll make me a better actor too. You know? Yeah. And if I'm going to give you one, your marching orders for today, yes, please. Can I, can I have consent to coach you for a minute. Please, please. Okay. Um, I don't like to coach without consent. I have to ask my mom that sometimes because I'm like, mom, I feel like you want me to help you with advice here or just hear you because otherwise I'll get into trouble. Right. Okay. So Uh, there's two different things about celebration. I think it's so vital. I think you cannot build upon success. You haven't celebrated. Mm. And there's a difference between, I'm going to get a manicure. Great. That's a great way of celebrating. The question is, who am I becoming because of this success? And for you to define that question for yourself, which you feel right at the precipice of being able to answer. So what I love that you said so beautifully is I've gotten to the place where, oh, I believe in myself. We're, or we're like at 85% maybe right now, right? Right? And like, and uh, I was chosen for what I can offer as an actor. And there are, t- there are so, the collective of actors is not believing that. The collective of actors is believing, I have to have credits, I have to have the perfect headshot, I have to have the perfect self-tape. The whole of who I am is not what they're interested in whatsoever. And that's not what this pr- process has hopefully proven to you. And so to own that is gonna take a little bit of like, put your mask on around other actors. Don't get contagious when it comes to that way. That's why I think that when you pointed to the community, what I was seeing is I'm witnessing other people believing in themselves in a way that I'm believing, beginning to believe in myself. And I'm not saying this like Sheila June was like some lowly worm at the beginning of this, like not, not at all. That is not the light you give off at all. But what I'm, what the question for you to ask yourself is who am I becoming? because of the success. So I would, do you have an answer right now? Or do you want to think about it? I think I need to think about it. Great. Yeah. Think about it. And I would just offer to you is to put action to the thought, whether that is to write a letter to yourself, the, the self of you who decided to sign up for the course, write back and tell her what it was going to look like. She, so she can be a little more relaxed now or can believe in herself now, or, you know, suck on a crystal and blow a candle out. I don't know. Like just like do, I would put some conscious action to the who am I being now? And another part that I'm just gonna add to this is who needs to celebrate this with you? Is there anybody? Mom? Yeah, definitely my mom. Yeah, Yeah. my mom's been on this journey with me the whole time and has always believed in me and Yeah. yeah. So I want you to have some conscious gratitude for yourself. That's the other part that I believe in for celebration, which isn't, I'm so grateful I got a manager agent. It is. I'm so grateful for how I showed up here, how I said yes to this, mm. or pushed past this, just like, and, and the way to do that with witnessing, the reason why I think witnessing is so important, like you said, your mom would be the person to do this with is, <clears throat> you know, raise a glass or have a moment, say, hey, I want to have a moment and really consciously celebrate this and consciously be gra- grateful for myself in the process and be witnessed by someone else makes such a difference. Yeah. Okay. And then what it does, and here's the part that you got to think into, you are then accountable to being the person you just said you're able to be. So I want you to, my wish for you is that you stay accountable to the Sheila June that showed up in those. Yes. Oh, I love that. that. She is, that's the new Sheila June. That's the new normal. Yeah. And I think that one of the things with the group and with you was accountability. You know, when there's other people, you're, you're more inspired. So I think being accountable to myself who showed up is huge. Thank you for that. Sure. Um, so I want to leave you today, but I want to leave you. one last question. Yeah. I'm sure there are actors who are watching who are, you know, where you were in the beginning. What would you want to say to them to leave them with today? You are a whole artist and you can take action without drama or delay. And you may surprise yourself. You don't know the answers. Great. Beautiful. Thank you, Sheila June. Hey, I bet you've built some fans today just by on this video. Can anybody find you on Instagram or somewhere to like check you out? Yeah, I'm Sheila June Azim, A-Z-I-M on Instagram. Right. 
And we will put that in the link uh, so that you can find her as well. So you can find her on Facebook and in the podcast when we post it. I'm so grateful for you for sharing this really intimate journey with us. And um, I know that we'll be in touch inside the Facebook group and beyond. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. Love you. Thank you so yeah, much. Have a great time with your mom. Okay. I'm right. going to see you. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.